Hello folks, this is Stefan from overunity.com. I just wanted to show you now a video about the energy cell from ENG8. Here it is. Okay, let's go. I'm Nick Dimmock. I'm Managing Director of 350 PPM, the incubator and accelerator it's from Portugal. of anything wonderfully environmental. And today we're in Portugal. We're looking at a company that's developed the energy cell. They are coming from Portugal and they are have developed some kind, some kind of HHO cell, which is then, yeah, well, will you see that? Essentially, what you do is you plasmarize a water molecule. You get the hydrogen all excited. Two of the photons come off the hydrogen, bounce into the oxygen, and liberate a phenomenal amount of photonic energy. Creates. They are calling it photon energy. I don't know. Uh, to me, it sounds more like an HHO cell. It's a huge amount of light, huge amount of heat. So it can work on a cop of up to 30 times. Wow, COP, COP of 30 times, that's really huge. Right, now a heat pump is about three and has limitations when it's... Yeah, heat pumps are only up to three, factor three. It's especially cold. I've been out to see implosion machines in Italy that don't work. I've seen perpetual motion machines in Germany that also don't work, but this has been independently validated. Physicists have said it's worked. We're going to investigate this today and see where we go from there. Yeah, that's really huge if that really works like this. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. Can you tell us a little bit about the development of the product? It was uh, five years ago when we started investing in the project. So right. it, it uh, came from a gherkin jar to something which is very close to a product at the moment. People have been chasing this for a while. Technology is so unique. So the idea is to provide electricity at heat at a discounted price to end user. and. Um, it will be available 24-7 and it's green. So we use moisture in the air in one of the construction and uh, in another construction we use water because that's what uh, flowing through the chamber. There's no big difference between the water and the air system because both systems uh, use as a fuel uh, the humidity or, ex uh, or water. And no other emissions as a, as a result of the process we are using. Oh, that's really cool. The small device is just producing heat, like you can see here, but if we add a, a turbine on top of it, we have also electricity. Because of the high COP, you only need energy for the case when you start the system, yes. and later on it can operate on its own energy. Well, you can see here, uh, this seems like a plasma flow I don't know let's go on so it simply continues um, uh, feeding itself we have a unit uh, also which is capable to produce electricity straight away without a conversion stage and uh, the next stage for us is to increase coefficient of performance to higher level and that's really what we are fundraising for. This will allow us to uh, create a unit which can run and create more than it consumes of electrical power. A colleague from Mayan uh, has been there and has validated it also. He said it's very good. It's very, very good. You do a quant quantized power system or a microgrid. Yep. So these units would go in the house. We sell the householder um, discounted electricity yes. and discounted heat. Yes. And this, all the surplus electricity is then sold into the grid. And that would pay for itself within about 18 months, that business model. You've actually turned the electricity system on its head as opposed to electricity coming from coal-fired power stations into houses, now houses are producing the electricity and going... That's correct, so it's very similar to a solar panel system yes. other than it provides electricity 24-7. Grids have a really big problem that they can only accept 15, 18 to 20% maximum of renewable energy 
because they've got these very high spikes. What I find particularly interesting about the technology is that it's not dependent on already existing infrastructures. It's something that can sit a parallel to already existing infrastructures. It can be used for independent energy sourcing. So you're, if you're in remote environments or if you're in island environments or if you want to create pollution-free energy, it's all there. If you're looking at steel, steel making processes, or especially in this area, which is ceramics making, you need a temperature up to around 1,800 800 degrees centigrade. The core of the actual unit is at 6,000 degrees centigrade, so you've got the, they certainly got the heat there. We're in discussions with a couple of ceramics companies to be able to make this unit from ceramic so that it would be able to operate at, say, 2,000 degrees centigrade, so that you could fire a ceramics furnace from it, or you'd be able to fire a, um, a, metal, a metal furnace from it. Well, that's the problem. They generate very high heat, as he says, and um, to convert this back to electricity is pretty hard. So maybe he can. they can use Stirling's engine or something like this. We will see. Michael, I understand your background was in engineering. Correct, yes. Right after university, I started at ABB, which turned into Alstom, which further turned into GE. And you were in charge or responsible for? monitoring systems in, for all sorts of power plants, from nuclear, gas-driven ones, uh, steamed uh, plants. So monitoring systems was my responsibility. I developed uh, software and electronics uh, to make this uh, type of power plants more secure. One was verified working in UK by Professor uh, Morgan, who is currently professor in uh, Brighton University. This was a very important step for us because a lot of people just simply don't believe that uh, what, what the unit can, can achieve. In exactly in the same way as we did here, we, uh, with the consultant here, with Dr. Marais, we said, uh, could you please come and look at our methodology? He came four times and we ran the system um, each time like a couple of hours to, to make sure that he understands how all uh, parameters are measured. He took all equipment, which all the sensors which we, we were using, and they were calibrated by the same institute to make sure that they are showing true value. Uh, we asked him to actually sign on COP, yes, yeah. not just simply come and state that uh, that's what he has observed, but actually to look at the methodology we are using for measuring the power we are consuming, the power we are producing, and uh, sign on the methodology and calculation itself, and that's exactly what he has done. And we used uh, the um, institute here, Electrical Institute, which works a lot on uh, certification of products. They will take us, I think, through where we are now and certify the final product too. Person. Well, that's very good, yeah. If they really have measured that all and if it really produces this power, what they are telling, not bad at all. Finally, I was always interested in uh, this cold fusion stuff since I first heard of that. Mm -hmm. And I was so extremely fascinated about this topic that I instantly said, I'm your guy, do, do you want to hire me? In the next six months, we have a number of applications we really wanted to focus on, and then we wanted to scale those applications in terms of just making more of those products and licensing other companies to make those products. We have a mini cast iron stove here. We would supply these energy cells to manufacturers of stoves. They would then do the application engineering with our team so that the stove and the energy cell are fully integrated. So you would use the same space as you'd have for a stove in your house, but you would actually have the stove heating your house. And in another variant of that, we would put a small micro turbine on top of the energy cell. So a stove like this would be able to provide the heating for the house and also the electricity for your house. A massive market, which is outdoor space heat, outdoor heating for cafes, restaurants, large entertainment facilities, a similar type of device to this could easily be retrofitted because the energy cell effectively goes into the top of the unit and in the bottom you would put the power electronics. 
So in both devices, you can see that the energy cell is very easy to retrofit into existing um, appliances. And it opens up a whole sea of new opportunities uh, to everybody, really. By putting a 10 kilowatt electrical hybrid generator into a car, the car basically would then be able to run effectively forever without a refuel because yes. the energy is coming from the moisture in the air. Yes. The system is basically cooling itself. We're, used, you, we're extracting electricity from the micro turbine. Yes. Or if it's a truck, you just put a bigger unit on a truck and the truck could run 24-7 without refueling with no, no, no emissions. We, we have a multinational team, so it yes. includes people from different countries. Originally the development was from Russia. We have specialists in Poland, we have specialists in Germany, in UK. We had some facilities in UK as well for, for some time, but we decided to come to Portugal and uh, have here, um, this laboratory as our global R&D center, and we will relocate all the people in here so that they can be in one space developing the product further. This, this topic is extremely interesting because, it's, first of all, it is unique. There is no product like this on the market. I just think that this is just like going right up there, frankly. Yeah. And I think it's a very, very good investment opportunity. We know that science work, works, when we know the process works, it, and it's about uh, engineering next and turning it into a product. When we achieve uh, a very low price per kilowatt hour of electricity, for example, that we can generate with those devices, this will be way cheaper than the, the standard electricity that you can get off the grid. So um, I think for households especially and uh, also for, for regions where you cannot connect to the grid, um, this is very, very interesting. It would be very difficult to put evaluation on, um, on a company because in a sense we will have a unit which you can start and it will power itself because it will produce more electricity than it consumes for the process itself. There's no emission because we use water as our fuel. There's yeah, the problem is uh, how much electricity is used to use this power supply and uh, can this micro tube turbine they will put onto this device really could put out more electrical power than it uses to run this device. That's the main problem which I still wanted to see how much power they are needing to start this process well okay we will see it's nothing produced as a byproduct okay that's it okay so hopefully we will see soon um, some more test data of that and we will see okay thanks a lot for watching and I hope uh, Give me a like if you like that and um, yeah, subscribe if you haven't not yet and till the next time. Bye bye now.